Hello everyone and welcome to my first how-to video slash tutorial. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I created this 3D chess animation. Alright, so this was a project I did for a client last year and since then I've gotten so many messages and comments from people basically requesting a tutorial to show how I did that and I finally had the time so let's just dive in. Also before we begin I just wanted to mention that I'm not going to recreate the entire animation. We're only going to focus on the concepts and techniques that I used and um, some of the issues that I had to face. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is disable this collection and create a new one to bring in our 3D model and we're going to name it chess um, set and we're going to download this 3D model from Sketchfab. This is actually the exact same model that I used in my project. So we're just going to bring it in our scene, scale this up and then I model a room. But for this video, we are going to use our default cube. We're going to bring these down a little bit, move it to another collection. Okay, so we're going back to the solid view and disable this environment for now. The next thing I did was make a plan or strategy of how those chess pieces are going to move across the board. And it helped me to sync up those movements with the music that I was going to use. It also helped me to understand where those pieces were going to go break on the board. And that's really important when using cell fracture. How I did that is by watching a lot of videos online of different chess games and made my own little chess match and refined some of the movements so it fits the number of beats that I had in the music. Then I also had a rough map of where those pieces were going to go break. After everything was decided, I created a dumbed down animation of those movements synced up with the music and here's what it looks like. Alright, the next step is to apply cell fracture to those pieces in the exact spot where they're going to break. But before that, I think so it's a good idea to apply our materials. Once that is out of the way, we can go ahead and deal with cell fracture. And for this video, bring this pawn here, this one here, and this pawn in this cell. So I think so you can already guess what's going to happen. The black pawn is going to hit the white one, and this white pawn is going to hit the black one. So the impact is going to be from this direction. And to guide our cell fracture, like so, we're going to use this annotation pen tool and guide the cell fracture tool to fracture this object from this direction. Before I apply cell fracture to the chess objects, I'm just going to quickly show you how the cell fracture tool actually works. Select the annotate tool and we're going to make some lines and you can notice that these lines are actually being drawn in the 3D space and we don't want that. So we're going to go here and change this from 3D cursor to surface and now when we're going to draw anything it's going to stick on the surface of our cube. So we're going to draw some random lines and these lines are actually going to guide the fractures in our cell fracture tool. I think so. It's something like this looks good. We're going to select this object and then go here. And from quick effects, we're going to select cell fracture. So from this menu, we're going to select annotation pencil because that's going to tell the tool, uh, the cell fracture tool to use these lines or these drawing as the guide for the fractures. 
and we're going to keep the noise at 0.5 and source limit is the number of pieces this cube is going to be broken into and something like 80 looks good we're going to leave all of these settings like they are uh, right here we're going to name a new collection so all of the broken pieces are going to be placed into a single collection broken cube the cube has been broken into several pieces and our original cube that refractor is still here it is going to serve us a really important purpose but for now we are going to just hide it i'm also going to delete the annotation lines because we don't need those anymore i'm just going to select all of these pieces go to objects rigid body add active this is going to add rigid body physics to all of these pieces and if i play it right now you can see it's just going straight through the floor and to fix that we're going to select the floor add rigid body but for this we're just going to change this from active to passive and now if I play this you can see all of those pieces just falling to the floor select all objects and make sure there is, there is one active object in your selection while holding alt key I'm just gonna uncheck this so it basically copies whatever you are changing here to all the objects that are selected and if I play it right now you can see all of the pieces are staying in place bring it to 30 frame and just select one object hit I to insert a keyframe here and just take it one frame uh, forward and check this box and hit I again to add a keyframe what we're going to do is select all of other objects and while this object is active we're just going to hit ctrl L and link animation data so all of the objects have those keyframes if I play again at 30 frames it's going to break so bring our original cube back bring it here or maybe just keep it here and at 60 frames I'm gonna insert a keyframe here and go to frame number one and bring this cube here and insert a keyframe again so what you can see is at around 30 frames it comes into contact with broken cube I can go ahead and add rigid body to this cube instead of dynamic we're gonna select animated once I hit play, you can see that it is breaking this cube. To show a greater force, I'm just going to expand this, take it further away, go to graph editor, and you know, exaggerate the force of this cube. Think so. Something like this looks good. Now if I play it back, I think so it looks good now comes the part we are, where we are going to hide these cracks so that our cube uh, looks perfectly intact before the impact what I'm gonna do is add another cube bring it up hide this cube and select one object from here go to object properties and under visibility insert keyframes here so it is really important to activate the visibility of uh, our broken objects before um, the dynamic aspect of those pieces and I'm gonna go one frame back and disable the visibility so it's it's only going to show this at frame 30 right and I'm just going to select all of the broken pieces we have our active object and we're just gonna hit ctrl L and copy all of the animation data so you can see all of the, these pieces are now having these visibility keyframes as well what's going to happen is right at the point of impact this cube is going to appear like this and we're going to do the same thing with this cube uh, instead we're going to hide it at the exact point of impact so right around here this is going to disappear so we're going to just uncheck these boxes and insert keyframe and at um, 29th frame we can just check these boxes and insert keyframes now we are back and we are going to break this object we're going to use our annotate tool change this to surface make some lines something like this is good and we're going to go back and select this object, go to quick effects, cell fracture, 
everything is set and in our collection we are going to use the white pawn I'm just going to name it one because this is the first object that's been broken so you can name it however you like and hit OK I'm just going to bring it back but before I do that I'm just going to put a keyframe there I'm going to bring it back and add another keyframe take it at the end of our timeline and now we can go ahead and select all those pieces apply rigid body have one object active and while holding the alt key I'm just gonna select dynamic so this is going to disable dynamic simulation for uh, the rigid body at whatever frame that you'd like this pawn to be broken we're gonna just go there insert a keyframe here and move one frame uh, forward and check this box and insert a keyframe again and I think so I'm gonna insert the visibility keyframes as well I'm gonna bring it on the previous keyframe and go here and insert these keyframes here and move back one frame and uncheck these boxes and what I'm gonna do is copy the animation data to all the other pieces so all of all of these pieces are going to disappear and appear at the same time okay so now I'm going to animate this one right here Okay, so now that we have that animated, I'm just going to replay it quickly. Okay, so it's falling down the plane. We are, we need to add rigid body to the floor as well, add, add it as passive, so we can see that it is falling on the floor. We are going to adjust the, the graph here. Somewhere around this looks good, like that. So we have this rigid body to this object and click animated instead of dynamic this is going to destroy it like this another thing I wanted to mention is in my animation I reduced the gravity in my scene so to do that we are going to scene properties and under gravity we are going to like something like negative one let's try it with that mm, something like 2.5 this is something that you can play around with whatever you like so now we are going to bring this pawn right here to come forward before the impact so somewhere around 20 we are going to bring our keyframes back okay so I think so this is maybe a bit too early and we're gonna ease the the animation like this maybe a bit like this Okay, so right at the point of impact, we are going to hide this, add the keyframes, and at frame 30, we are going to hide it. So if I replay it, it looks good. Okay, so now we're going to break this, um, the black pawn, at around frame 70. So we're going to repeat the exact same process. So here's the fun bit that I had to learn the hard way, which is that rigid bodies take up space in blender even if they are not visible and to avoid something like this if you have more than one item in one place you have to keep it uh, keep them in a rigid body collections so if i go here you have collections each of these individual cells are different collections to keep our broken pieces so since the pieces of white pawn are in collection number one we cannot put pieces of this pawn in this collection Now that it's done, I'm going to copy the animation data to all of these pieces. Now we have this. And because these pieces are in a different collection, they are not interacting with the floor that we had initially. So what I'm going to do is add another plane, scale it up, bring it up. And it's sitting right below the surface of our first floor. I'm going to move it to a chest set. 
from here I'm gonna add rigid body passive for second collection now if I play it it's working fine now now that everything is working fine I'm going to animate this pawn hitting the black pawn One quick little thing, but before we're just going to test it out with this. If I play it right now, what you're going to see is this and this. You might think that it looks good, but if you notice closely, because this pawn is in second collection, pieces of the first pawn are going to go right through the middle of this pawn. Just watch it. And you can see that all of those broken pieces just go right through it. To fix that, we are going to add keyframes to this pawn. For that, I'm going to just go right around here and add keyframe here. And before this frame, our pawn is going to stay in the first collection. After this, let's have a look again. You can see now those broken pieces are interacting with our second pawn. But I think so we can also delay this right before the impact and change it at, th at that point. At the previous frame, we're going to change it to first. So if I play it again, so we have something like this. Once everything is done, I'm going to go to our scene setting and bake our simulation. Okay, so that is pretty much it. The next thing I did was add flip fluid for the blood. One of the issues I faced while doing that is, I think so because we had some uh, active rigid bodies in our scene, I had to recreate this scene without the active rigid body objects, export it as an alembic file and bring it to our scene. After that, I just animated the cameras and that is it. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit that subscribe button and give this video a like if you learned something new. And if you have any kind of suggestion uh, on how you can improve these videos, please feel free to share those in the comments down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.